Unfortunately, we're between a rock and a hard place as a country. The Tories are terrible, saddling us with a mountain of debt from their shocking COVID overreaction, in power during the insidious woke takeover of our public institutions, and presiding over shocking inflation, exploding interest rates, and the highest tax burden in 70 years. But if you think that's bad, wait till Labour get in. Are you telling me that they will stand firm as Sunak is to the union's inflation-busting wage demands, which would bake high prices and further debt into the system for years to come? The public sector will be expecting a bonanza with Keir Starmer at number 10, given the fact that his party is bankrolled by the aforementioned unions. And most of the public sector are Labour's electoral constituency. They want to emulate disastrous Joe Biden's so-called Inflation Reduction Act with a capital spending splurge of up to £55 billion, which will sink the country further into the red. Well, red is Labour's colour after all. As an organisation, Labour have been drinking the net zero Kool-Aid as well, with plans now for a 1970s style energy company, which will gamble taxpayer billions on flaky renewables. Meanwhile, Keir Starmer will not grant any new gas or oil licences in the North Sea should he get into power. Now, what do you think that's going to do to energy prices as we rely increasingly on windmills that sometimes turn and sometimes don't, and solar panels in a famously overcast country. To not exploit our own natural resources will likely see us rely on backup from foreign tyrants like Vladimir Putin or unscrupulous regimes like Saudi Arabia just to fill the gap. It's my view that the windfall tax on energy companies make a great headline, but is a terrible policy. Those companies who we are currently clobbering will simply take their investment to explore new renewables elsewhere. And what do Labour want to do to these companies with whom we are in partnership to guarantee future energy supplies? Increase those windfall taxes. Mark my words, they will run for the hills. Now, yes, I want to go green and get those carbon emissions down. And green energy is a great potential opportunity for Britain. We lead the world in green tech and countless jobs could be created, but not without oil and gas on our own shores as the ultimate insurance policy in a dangerous and unpredictable world. Energy security is national security. Crazy green policies already mean that we now have to import shale gas from Joe Biden and the United States when we've got shale natural gas, oil, and dare I say it, coal, on our own doorstep. Make it make sense. And a future Labour government will take us further down the green rabbit hole. A once impressive party under the leadership of Tony Blair, who got some things wrong but plenty right, were elected on a message of low tax, social mobility, and three great words, education, education, education. Under Starmer, it will be spend, 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 and we will all be paying the price. Labour want to increase foreign aid, just as Brits struggle to put food on the table, sending millions to countries like India who have their own space programme. Make it make sense. They're going to give the NHS more money, a pay rise to GPs, more nurses, more police officers, more doctors. What planet do they live on? Who is going to pay for this? Easy, you and me. Labour are deeply dishonest when they sell their spending plans about a so-called non-DOM tax rise. That's right. They reckon they can spend all this money on public services based upon the non-DOM tax rise. Now, this is a plan to clobber rich foreigners who make their home here. The most that will achieve is three and a half billion pounds. But it's possible that barely any of that will be raised because you might have noticed that these rich people are pretty mobile and they too will run for the hills. And who could blame them? You've got to ask yourself, do you want these rich people living in this country, buying their Rolls Royces here and investing here, or do you want them doing it in Dubai or Singapore? 
I'm very sad that we live in an unequal world. But how does rich people leaving Britain make us richer? Make it make sense. Apparently, millions are going to come from the regressive policy of taxing private schools, which means the poorest kids will be forced to leave and go into state education. Any gain from this tax will be lost as the state has to now educate the kids who leave the private sector. We already don't have enough school places, so that means we'd have to build more schools as well. Make it make sense. Labour say they will balance the books and cost every policy carefully. But at the same time, they're proposing free childcare for under 11s, the net cost of which would likely be £13 billion. How is that affordable right now? Don't take my word for it. The respected director of the Institute for Fiscal Studies, Paul Johnson, has said increasing revenues through closing tax loopholes would be a drop in the ocean of what is needed. Under the useless Tories, Britain already lives beyond its means, dining out on the crack cocaine of borrowed billions. Well, it will only get worse if the other lot get in. It was Winston Churchill who famously said, you cannot tax your way to prosperity. Well, under Keir Starmer, you can look forward to five years of just that. Tax, not prosperity. When you raise taxes like corporation tax, you often get less in as companies use clever accountants or change their headquarters to save money. The painful truth is that Labour can only bankroll their policy wish list from ever higher taxes on all of us, particularly wealth creators. Now, why is that a problem? Well, because when taxes are too high, it kills investment, it kills aspiration, and it stops people from buying things. And for an economy based on consumption, that's a race to the bottom. Britain will go from broke to bankrupt under Keir Starmer. Britain can't afford a Labour government. It makes no sense.